Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk, and it is great to be back. I've absolutely missed you guys so much. It's almost uncanny, the feeling that I feel for the Vaniacs out there. And so, uh, I've missed you a whole lot. It was pretty awesome. I had a best trip in Bordeaux. But I've gotta admit, there was a little part of me that wanted to work out, because I started doing that, and that was fun. But more importantly, to do the show. I taped an enormous amount of film in Bordeaux. And I will give you a little sneak peek at the end of the show of what's to come. We're gonna have a whole couple of episodes on Gary's visit to Bordeaux. But for now, I'm gonna mix it up because I know you all thought I was gonna do Bordeaux today. Admit it, admit it. Today we're gonna talk about wines that I enjoy quite a bit. We talk about them all the time and there was a bunch of new ones in stock and I said, you know what? I just drank a crap load of red wines my palate can use a little bit of a break. I probably, uh, looking back at my notes, probably went to, a, and when I say notes, I hope you know that that means up here in my brain because I'm about as much of a scholar as, anyway, but when I went back on my notes, um, I probably tasted a good 2,500 wines last week from Bordeaux and probably 98.9% of them, 98.93472% of them were red. So I'm in the mood for some white wine. Gotta mix it up, as they say. This is far from mixing it up. This is more just getting my palate back to some normality. We're gonna talk about the Loire Valley and Sancerre. Sancerre, as many of you know, who've been watching the show for a long time, are some of the most interesting and exciting wines to my palate. I find them to be very intriguing. One thing you should know about Sancerre is that it's 100% Sauvignon Blanc. And they're so different from the Sauvignon Blancs from New Zealand and from California that I think that their terroir sings to me. A pleasant little song like Christina Aguilera, over and over, Lionel Richie, over and over. You know, I've gotta to listen to the same song at least 200 times. But they sing to me. And they sing to me because I think they bring enormous amount of minerality, uh, tropical fruit, complexity, acidity, balance, and structure, not to mention, go awfully well with lots of foods that I like, like shellfish, like caviar, believe it or not, really interesting combo, you gotta try that like sushi and uh, like like light salads and little things of that nature. So they're, they're great wines to drink by themselves. They're great wines to drink with a meal. I find them to be great wines to drink at room temperature. Most prefer them cold. Let's see what we think of these four today on Wine Library TV. I like that, that's kind of fun. This is the Domaine Girard 2005 Sancerre La Garine Vineyard. This is a 15 US dollar wine. And uh, most importantly, um, I find it to be a tremendously good price point for Sancerre. Sancerre's have started climbing the, the pendulum of price. So this for 15 bucks is a lot of fun. And I'm excited about trying this. I had the 04, which I thought was really good. This is the 05 vintage, a little bit more of a classic vintage in the Loire Valley. So this should be even better. And let's find out if that's true. Again, the color is not going to change your life. You know, it's a light kind of, very light color, kind of, actually. So, not that great, in my opinion. Unless you like light colors. Interesting nose. Actually smells a little bit like a used tire, which is a little rubber aspect going on there. Like, nothing, nothing too profound to me. A little grapefruit, which is nice and always appreciated. Light hints of gooseberry as well coming through on the nose, which is quite quite nice combo. But the, the rubber smell, the old rubber tire smell, is definitely making its presence felt in this wine, and which is fine. Let's try it. That's how you welcome me back. Um, light, disjointed, not as complex as most of the Sancerre. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna give it a real slap in the buns. Reminds me of some cheap California Sauvignon Blanc with a little bit of spritz and acidity. So I'm not gonna give it the ultimate uh, bash. P.S. Side note, little asterisk. There's many California Sauvignon Blancs that I like. But please, California people, that's you winemakers and owners, Stop trying to make Sauvignon Blanc that tastes like Chardonnay, huh? Anyway, um, I don't like this wine at all. I'm gonna score this wine 77 points. 
because it's not good, because it's heat, and because it's off balance, and because it's not good, and I'm sad. All right, let's move on. This is the Thomas Labellil 2005 Sancerre Lemon de Maiz single vineyard, 92 points. Josh Reynolds, help me here. What am I doing here? I'm rusty, man. I'm rusty. 92. <laughs> so it's like it's like you know, 92 points. Josh Reynolds, 18 bones, which is not too bad. Again, Josh Reynolds writes for Stephen Tanzer, who is a uh, you know one of my favorite wine critics in the world. He writes like a poet. Stephen, you're a poet when it comes to wine terminology. So you know, too many people are caught up in scores in today's world of the wine industry. Me too, probably. But his his words just fly on the paper like a dove in the sky. No, no honestly, he's he's a tremendous wine critic who has great notes. He uses Josh Reynolds a lot. Josh is doing Loire Valley for him. 92 points, very high score, 18 bucks. Dying to try this. Again, not too dark. These are light style wines. Sauvignon Blanc again. Much more clean, clean and clever and and crisp. Clean, you know, the three C's, when they're clean and crisp, but when they're clever on top of being clean and crisp, you know you've got a great wine. And, and this wine, right on the nose, has that lemon peel coming through. A little hint of nutmeg, which is quite intriguing on the nose. Almost like a lemon custard coming through. So there's a little creaminess to it um, that I'm really intrigued by and has definitely sparked my interest. If I was a dog, and I may be, my ears would pop up at this point because it's really just that intriguing. Now I don't have to be a jerk off. Now I can be proud of pumping Sancerre into the US public and telling people to try these wines. This is an absolute dream. Very luscious on the palate, great mouthfeel. Tremendous structure of acidity balanced with hints of pineapple, light grapefruit flavors, and, and you know, and this is so dumb, but like green grapes. I mean, you know, that's what it tastes like. And so, I like that. Great mouthfeel. I mean, the silky finish, still tasting the wine, real crisp very clean and not overbearing. You know, all that oak and butter that Chardonnays sometimes do over the top, too much, cloying, just heavy, just too much to, you know, drink more than one glass up. This is the total opposite. Let's go to the other direction. This is crisp and clean and light and precise and perfect. Let's score this wine 91 points. I'm gonna go point lower than Reynolds on this one. You know what? I got a feel from the heart. Let's go 90 points on this one because it's good there's it's just missing that little charisma you know you know when I do the shoulder thing it's just missing that little oomph that I have tasted in other better Sancerre's so I'm gonna go 90 points in this wine I wanted to give it 91 because it's so perfect and so well made but at the end of the day you gotta score for yourself and you know for me it's just missing a little bit of that zing factor that I like a little shoulder action to give it that 91 but it's a very good bottle of wine and really well made and if you're doing crab legs, I mean if you're doing crab legs, seek this out or seek out any Sancerre. Hopefully you'll get a good one but they're just great wines. I mean they're just good. Okay, Reverdy, great producer, 2005, Sancerre and this one's real good. Uh, this is also Josh Reynolds scored. This is 90 points, Josh Reynolds and this is 19 bones and you heard me say this is real good, and the reason that popped out of my mind is that um, I just recently had the 04 version of this. And it's so tricky about wine. If you're just watching and getting into wine, the differences in wine from year to year, and I'm sure a lot of you are like, of course, but seriously, it's staggering. Coming from Bordeaux and tasting 04, 05, and 06, I mean, it's shocking. Anyway, the 04 of this producer's, uh, Reverdy's produce, uh, Sancerre was outrageous. Again, 90 points, Josh Reynolds, 19 bucks. The 04 that I had was very recently in the city at Baltazar, I think. I can't remember exactly where I had it, but I had it just for my own personal use. So you can see, you know, I, I drink what I preach. You know, I like Sancerre. All right. This is a little bit more color than the last two. You see it right there? I can see Eric nodding his head. I hope he comes through on camera a little bit. Um, a little bit more weight to it. A 
Now this one is the most intriguing from a minerality standpoint. This really smells like like seashells and mixed of, uh, you know those nice buildings that they build all over the world and they, ha they like to landscape it nice and they put those big round stones on there that are real profound and you can pick it up and throw it through the window if you're a punk kid. There it was. Anyway, um, you know, that's kind of the smell I'm getting through that. You know, if you've ever seen them, like, because we did it for Wine Library, because we're a profound building, that's nice. You know, the, the big stones, they have a nice, fresh, stony smell to them when they get unloaded from the big dump truck. And, uh, and that's what I'm smelling a little bit on this wine. So I'm getting a lot of stones, a lot of minerality, minerals uh, coming through, and a little bit of a hint of the ocean. That seashell is definitely coming through. It's really nice. But not a lot of fruit outside of a little tailing hint of pineapple as I pull my nose away. Let's give it a whirl. What's funny about this wine is that it's very clean and it's got good body weight, but the, okay, came in a little bit there. Spoke a little too soon, a little, little fourth quarter John Elway drive magic. Did that for the Denver fans, I hate John Elway. But, you know, it, it felt a little light, but then it kicked in a little bit more flavor profile than, and it's, actually it's still kicking, so it's pretty darn impressive how much this wine, hold on one second, a <laughs> little snafu. Um, it's okay, I mean I like it. It's, it's a good wine, it's well structured, it's not as good as uh, the, uh, no, it's definitely not as good as the Thomas Lemblin prior to it. It's got a, which is a, it's a dollar more, so definitely in the same price range. It's got good body, it's got good structure, it's well made, it's structured, I like the finish. There's a good bounce of flavors that are going on, and what do I mean by that is it goes from pineapple to minerals, back to, to almost like a grapefruit flavor, back to some minerals, so it's kind of doing a little dance, you know, poga, back in poga, I don't even know what that means, but it's doing like, Square dancing, you know, it's kind of square dancing with itself between the minerals and do you remember when you had to pick the girl to square dance with and you just didn't know what to do? I mean, you're in third grade, it's all awkward, I don't know. Anyway, you know, it's square dancing with minerals and with tropical fruit, which is kind of intriguing and admirable. It's a good effort. I don't think that these people were able to, in this vintage, hone that perfectly. I find it disjointed, it wasn't completely focused. Um, it's a little clumsy. It's like to Tony La Russa driving his car. You know, it's a little punch drunk. And so, I'm gonna score this wine 88 points. It's a good effort, it's a good wine. I won't recommend it because it's 20 bones and I'd rather you spend your money on something more worthwhile at that price point. But it's definitely a solid example of Sancerre. Finally, the Henry Bourgeois 2005 Sancerre. And this is the uh, Le MD. Um, this is interesting. Big score, been dying to try this since it came in. 23 US dollars, so a little bit more on the profound pricing for Sancerre. And 93 points from the wine enthusiast. And the wine enthusiast is, you know, a fine establishment and a good magazine, but I find them to be a little bit like Vegas. It's a crapshoot, you know, I mean, really. Sometimes it's really awesome and where they'll score something that Parker and Spectator won't score well, and they're absolutely right. Other times I've been disappointed, so it'll be fun to see where this comes in. Again, a little bit darker on the color as well, a little bit more similar to the Reverdy. 23 bones, so better bring the thunder, it's a little bit more expensive. 93 bones, 93 points, bones, points. 93 points, let's give it a whirl. Wow, it's off to a good start. By far the most interesting nose of the bunch. The, the first thing I thought was a big shower head. You know those nice fancy hotels? I don't stay there, but I heard. You know, in a nice fancy hotel, the big shower heads that pour down on you, it's like raindrops. Almost like imagine that with tons of green fruits like kiwi and, and, and grapes. I hate using that, but it is what it is. And, and kiwis and, you know, star fruit and grapefruit and it's pineapple. Yeah, it feels like it just, you know, it's almost like you walked into the shower and you just, and like, psh, it came exploding on you, but it came from the top down, and that's why I think I'm using it. It actually worked my nose a little bit different than a lot of wines did. It kind of hit it hard and then kind of came out instead of subtly coming in. It was kind of interesting. Sorry about the analogy there with the nose and everything, but pretty interesting the way the nose attacks your senses, and almost for that, it's worth 23 bones to see if you're willing to see that difference, because it's clearly there. The attack on the bouquet is totally different 
the, gosh, maybe almost any wine I've done on the show so far. So that was a lot of fun. I've experienced it a couple other times. Pretty cool. I kind of put that up. Cool. Anyway, sorry. That was kind of my own moment. You were here to share it, but that was for me, not for you. All right. Trick alert. That's right, not trick or treat, trick alert. Very heavy, very, very intriguing on the palate. Good body weight, um, good acidity, nice grapefruit flavor coming through, good grassy notes, which I like, almost towards New Zealand, so many love. But a little too creamy and a little too buttery and almost a little oaky and, and trick alert like, is this Sancerre trying to be a Chardonnay? And so, I don't find it true to the area. It's not as crisp and clean, as precise as some of the Sancerres that I've liked. There's a lot of people who'd like this wine. So, you know, I don't want to pan it, but uh, not for me, but it's really good wine. And you'll probably be surprised. I'm gonna score it 89 points. And so you'll, it's a good score. I really like the wine. Um, but it's not a tremendous pure example of what Sancerre is. It's a little bit more of a creamy, buttery style, but if you find yourself as a fan that falls in between Sancerre and Chardonnay, well then let's scream, high five, take off our clothes and jump in the water. I'm, I'm just kidding. But you should definitely, definitely try this wine. And really that's what wine's about. It's not the specific score, but it's understanding your palate, understanding where you sit with wine within yourself and then finding the precise wines and opportunities to score wines that you enjoy. And if that's a $5 Pinot Noir, then God bless you. If it's a $7,000 bottle of Bordeaux, God bless you. But you know, I mean the reality is know your palate, feel your palate, find out what you like. And if you find yourself as somebody who finds Sancerre a little bit light and too crisp, but Chardonnay's a little too oaky and over the top and not your style, maybe this is the perfect wine for you and maybe a 95 point wine for you. That was a little soapbox action. 16 million bottles of uh, Sancerre are produced in the Loire Valley. It comes from 15 villages. It's a little fun facts for you, 16 to 15. I thought that was kind of intriguing. Um, it's an up and coming area. It's an area that I'm really concerned that the prices are gonna shoot up because the wines are expensively made. And once they become a brand in the US or any other market, the prices will shoot up. I'm sure I'm probably not helping that. But get in and jump in on these wines. They last three to four years, longer than you'd think. And vintages like 2003 and 2005 are very worthwhile to put away for three, four years. <sighs> Oof, I didn't tell you anything about Bordeaux yet, but I will, very shortly. But before I do that, I'm gonna give you a little clip. But before I do that, I'm gonna tell you two little things. One, I'm gonna ask you a question of the day. In Bordeaux, I've had a very, very intriguing time there and was really opened up to what Bordeaux wine's all about. I mean, Bordeaux classifieds, the big wines, you hear it of the first groats and the second groats and all that, Lafitte's and Margot's and Lynch Bages and Pichon, represent about 3% of the Bordeaux market, I know. It's pretty staggering. And the enormity of quality wines that I tasted on this trip between 10 and $20 retail. And all these poor wineries are struggling because people think Bordeaux is too expensive. It's brand in the US is a very expensive luxury item and it's because of these top cuvées. Um, it's gonna be fun to taste and bring in these wines and to get people to taste them because I think I was shocked how many more 15 to $18 Bordeaux wines I found more profound and more exciting, more interesting than 15 to $18 California wines. And that's tough for me to say because I adore California wines. But it, you know, it is what it is, as they say. And so there's some real interesting things. And I guess at the end of the day, perception didn't match reality. And so my question of the day today is, what in your life, an example, this is where I love to get, I mean, it gets good, I wanna read tonight. I'm gonna get caught up, I'm gonna read this stuff. So help me out, and lurkers, you're pissing me off. Get out here, I mean, there's so many people watching. I had some lurkers in the store today from Denver and from Mass. So, so join, say hello. Hello, Lionel Richie, you know? What is the biggest example where your perception was not reality? Give me a little story. And now, for a little clip, of what I was doing in Bordeaux. Because <laughs> you, that, I just always wanted to do that laugh. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, aren't we?